I would like now to introduce our valedictorian for his valedictorian address, Mr. Levi Ducharme. I'm so honored that so many of you showed up to my inaugural address as Valley Dictator. <laughs> or at least that's what I think they told me I won today. So anyway, my first order as Dictator is that you can't leave until I'm done talking. So just sit back and relax. I have some great stories over the next hour or so to tell you, so it's going to be great. Um, all joking aside, I put a lot of work into this, so I hope you enjoy it. And um, feel, ple feel, ple feel free to applaud and laugh at any point during the speech. I'd like to start off by saying good morning. Good morning to students, staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2013. It is an honor to be your valedictorian today and to speak to a room full of people, people full of dreams, dreams full of potential, because they come from a well-educated group of people. I think this occasion calls for celebration, because in a very few short moments, we, the graduating class of 2013, will have earned the right to move this cat toy on the top of our head from one side to the other. <laughs> we will have done what 8.1% of the country will never do, graduate high school. And that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> to all of those furthering your education, don't worry. The fantastical roller coaster of knowledge will continue, and the ups and downs of life will proceed. On the upside, we'll make new friends, we'll learn new things, and we'll prepare ourselves for otherwise unreachable career goals. On the downside, tuition, living expenses, transportation expenses, book expenses, finals, debt, cleaning, managing your time, laundry, and in general, anything that wasn't already mentioned as being good. All of these things, for better or worse, are part of a very near future. In fact, it is quite possible that soon TV dinners will seem expensive. If you want them to be more flavorful, you'll have to steal the ketchup packets from McDonald's. This is a path that I and many of you have chosen, and I hope that soon I will meet up with some of you in the condiment section of a fast food restaurant. <laughs> and for those of you about to go into the workforce with your high school diploma at hand, remember, not only are you prepared to fill your life with purpose and your resume with experience, but you can also fill your freezers with as many TV dinners as you want, and you can put as much name brand Heinz ketchup on it. As is required in any decent year on speech, I decided to reflect on times we had together. For many of you, this includes school athletics. Whether you were playing in the field, cheering in the stands, we showed sportsmanship at its very finest. We will remember the basketball players' sensational shots, the volleyball players' well-executed spikes, the footballers and their unrelenting determination, the cheering of the cheerleaders, the soccer team screamers, the bowlers' division championship winning season, the baseball players' earth-shattering hits, the track team's incredible display of speed and athleticism, and the rest of us kind of running out of breath getting up to the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you, the everman, the unathletic, because for every one of us pushing our body to the limit, trying to achieve greatness for the school, there's one of us sitting in the basement trying to catch them all. But in all seriousness, you'll be the ones going out and making impressive strides in the world of business, engineering, or other fields, and this, for this you should be sincerely commended. The next and final event I'd like to dwell on today is that of our senior trip. It was cold, miserable, rainy, and all around terrible weather-wise, but we still managed to make a great time out of it, much in the spirit of this class. Still, it seems a bit of a problem when the most frequented attraction at the park was named the Human Dryer. <laughs> Fortunately, I've decided not to dwell on over shorter, smaller, and younger versions of ourselves, meeting up at this big, scary place that welcomed us as equals, provided us with delicious food, and offered us with help whenever we needed it. And that's mostly because this speech isn't supposed to be about Walmart. <laughs> Joking aside, elementary was spectacular, and I'm grateful for the teachers we had and the time we shared together. The second part of any decent valedictorian speech, I know you must be killing yourselves right now thinking that I'm only on the second part, but is giving thanks. And I consider this one to be very serious because there are people in this room, hi mom, <laughs> who've done everything for us and expected nothing in return. I want to take this time to exceed those expectations and give them some respect. First off, I'd like to thank the custodial staff, and you know that does not include you if your punishment for skipping was janitor of the afternoon. <laughs> Without your unwavering commitment to the cleanliness of the school, myself and many others would have been unhappy campers. To be, uh, let's give it a round of applause. <laughs> to 
To the AB Cedaring, thank you for fostering a competitive spirit in your classrooms. Without it, many of us would be struggling to pass remedial shoe time. On a serious note, your willingness to help, rather your eagerness to, is truly appreciated. This is something readily lost throughout the nation, and I'm thankful to have been part of such a close-knit educational community. <laughs> to the counselors and secretaries, thank you for putting up with my never-ending series of stupid questions that were already answered on the paper anyway. Without your readiness to assist, myself and many would probably have forgotten or not known the graduation was today. Thank you for all of your assistance throughout the years. And to the administration, which I broadly use to encompass everyone else, thank you. I don't know much about what you do, but your behind-the-scenes work is what helps keep this school operational. Although, many days, myself and many had wished it wasn't. For that, you deserve many thanks. I'd like to thank you as well, parents and family members of the class of 2013. Without your unwavering support, none of us would be here today. And finally, I'd like to thank you, the class of 2013, not for any outstanding accomplishments, but for the companionship and quality you've shown throughout the years. Also, because you're an exceptionally good-looking group of people. <laughs> Now, much like the greatest things in life must come to an end, so too must this speech. Through much Googling and YouTubing, I found that all valedictorian ends with something motivational, which I've come to realize is a really hard thing to do without dramatic music. So, because sure, some of you are going to be doctors, lawyers, engineers, and scientists, but some of you are going to be McDonald's employees chasing out people who steal ketchup packets to flavor their dinners. <laughs> but all joking aside, I put a lot of thought into this bit, and this is what I want to leave you with. So if you tuned me out, I urge you to return for just a minute more. A favorite quote of mine as hindsight is 2020. You aren't going to know how tomorrow will affect you, but 50 years from now, you're going to be able to look back and see how everything, all of your hard work, fit together to get you where you are. Nothing in life is permanent. Nothing is 100%. If you don't like where you are, do something. You're more than capable. If you like where you are, don't become complacent. Work hard to stay there, because anything can change. Make decisions as quickly as possible without losing accuracy, because eventually, like any test, you will run out of time. And most importantly, don't let high school be the best years of your life, otherwise you've done something wrong. You've been a spectacular group of people to speak to today, and thank you very much.